Hey people, Mark here, and welcome to another ship breakdown. I will not stop, you cannot make me. Today we're going over the Epoch class Heavy Carrier. If you like Halo ships, if you like sci-fi ships, because I will delve into other science fiction eventually, then why not hit the subscribe button down there? It's big and red and begging to be pressed. That came out wrong. Originally commissioned in 2475, the Epoch class Heavy Carrier is one of the biggest ships humanity has ever fielded. Measuring it at 2,563 meters, or about 0.5 infinities, and weighing 35 million metric tons. It bears some similarities to the Phoenix-class colony ship, the class of the famed Spirit of Fire, sharing its flat-top, jut-bottom silhouette. The heavy carrier is capable of taking heavy damage in combat, and form the core of most UNSC fleets, being one of the most well-regarded designs that Zenoviet heavy machinery ever pumped out. A full Epoch crew consists of 1,300 sailors and carries a complement of one battalion of marines. That's 800 personnel in the UNSC. With 12 hangars capable of holding three pelicans and two fighters, the full complement of those comes out to 36 dropships and 24 fighters. That number does not include longswords, which were apparently too large to fit in said hangars. They could be affixed externally via clamps and access umbilicals. We'll touch on this again later. With a ship that was built before the insurrection but served the UNSC well into the Human Covenant War, it must have been remarkably well designed for the era in that case, as many ships from that long ago were phased out or replaced. This can probably be attributed to the mentioned heavy armor, and the above average armament, which still stacks up to this day. 156A2 F9 Light Mac. This magnetic accelerator cannon is described as being a rapid fire variant of the same Mac mounted on the Stalwart class frigates. Despite being intended as a defensive weapon, the Epoch used its gun to assist coordinated volleys with other ships. This isn't surprising, the MAC proved itself early on to be one of the very few weapons in humanity's arsenal that was routinely effective against Covenant ships. So the Epoch withholding its MAC for defensive use only would be like a tank in an MMO not doing damage and just keeping aggro. A useless piece of shit, calm down. Two Mark 15 breakwater coil guns. These are the large guns on the front of the Epoch, and they are huge, and very interesting indeed. They only appear on the Colossal Epoch and Punic classes and, well, I'm very bad at making estimations, so I will not. I will instead defer to my friend Corporal Hot Pockets, who is much better suited than I to discuss the details of both engineering and military etiquette. Corporal, if you would. The Mark 15 Breakwater Naval Coil Gun is one of the most powerful weapons in the UNSC fleet's arsenal coming in a battery of three barrels per turret and common on the largest pre-war UNSC vessels, such as the Epoch-class heavy carrier, Punic-class supercarrier, and even potentially ground bases and space stations, the Breakwater is the largest known turreted coil gun, only surpassed in power by the spinal-mounted Max that act as the main weapons of UNSC ships. Its exact power level is unknown, but its overall length, barrel and turret, is 200 meters, while the Gladius-class Corvette is 243 meters. Given that the Gladius is the smallest known ship to be armed with a spinal mac, the 20DA1C2, and the barrel length of both appears to be about 120 to 150 meters, it's possible that each of the breakwater's barrels is equivalent to a Corvette mac, although there are a couple of other factors to a max power, such as the specific projectile used, light versus heavy coils, and the power availability on the ship. And speaking of, Given that the breakwaters are used on large capital ships with massive power reserves, and that the UNSC has shown to be able to load the physical max slugs into the firing chamber very quickly, the breakwaters are likely used to overwhelm energy shields with large volumes of fire. This complements the Epoch class heavy carrier specifically, as its main MAC is a modified rapid fire variant of a frigate's MAC, which is similarly meant to overwhelm enemy defenses with coordinated volleys of smaller projectiles, with the added flexibility of independent turrets which may be able to target multiple ships at once, or ships that aren't in the carrier's direct heading, which is very rare for UNSC warships. I hope that this can provide some unique insight into the breakwater specific strengths and capabilities. Thank you, Corporal. His channel's in the description, by the way. If you like my breakdowns, but you wish I could be more detailed or accurate in my references to real-world examples, go subscribe to him, trust me. Back to my regularly scheduled inaccuracy. I've got a brand to maintain. 12 M66 Sentry autocannon turrets alongside 12 M870 Rampart Point defense guns and 20 M810 Helix Point defense guns are all collectively described as secondary weapon batteries, sufficient to defend against small attack ships and bombers, but of limited use against larger enemy warships. That's what a Mac and the Breakwaters are for. 
The ship also has 70 Archer missile pods, nothing unusual there. If anything, it's fewer than I'd expect with its size, but the Epoch is the only ship in the entire Navy to also use M4020 Bident missile pods. Not Biden, Bident. <laughs> Interesting thing I learned when looking into these was that a trident with two prongs is called a bident. Go figure. Now these missiles are quite unique. They use a scaled down version of a UNSC Starship's fusion drive. Now I'm no physicist, but I know that the fusion drives that have been proposed today would be the most efficient power generators in history. We can assume that these are extremely long range missiles. Depending on the amount of fuel they can carry, they could possibly cross ludicrous distances. I'm talking hundreds of thousands of miles. Correct me if that's an overstatement. Not only this, but they can fit a variety of warheads, the most mundane of which being fusion warheads, thermonuclear devices. The other possible warheads are kinetic bundles and x-ray lasers. The kinetic bundles are an interesting concept a proposed method of orbital bombardment that entails the hurling of inert non-explosive materials at the ground at high speeds, probably a highly heat-resistant material like tungsten, allowing the kinetic energy to do the work for you. The implication with kinetic bundles on these missiles is that as the missile breaks apart, enough detritus would be scattered around to pummel the surface. This isn't just a science fiction idea. This has been proposed and tested in real life, obviously not on the scale that we're talking here, but known colloquially as the rods from God. That's fucking awesome. 200 pound tungsten rods dropped from orbit would hit the ground with the impact of a ballistic missile, minus any of the nuclear fallout. While I can't really see this being of much use against the Covenant, or even any stolen UNSC ships, the armor they use is kind of bullshit, I can imagine they got plenty of use out of this on insurrectionists on the ground. As for the X-ray laser warheads, I, um... Uh, look, I'm not even gonna try, I have no idea what that means. I talked about the basics of lasers in the frigates video, but an X-ray laser is a device that uses stimulated emission to generate or amplify electromagnetic radiation in the near X-ray or extreme ultraviolet region of the spectrum. Okay, wait, no, I didn't know that, I knew that. Do with that information what you will, if you want someone smart, please go watch Space Doc. Despite their apparent pervasiveness amongst the UNSC fleet, we never see them in action once and the only known Epoch-class heavy carriers are the UNSC Epoch herself and the UNSC Atlas. The Atlas carried a contingent of ODSTs from the 105th, and this was the very ship on board which the decades-long rivalry between Spartans and Helljumpers would begin. A story that any Halo lore fan is likely familiar with, an altercation was orchestrated between John 117 and four ODSTs. Uh, wait, hold on, Anthony, wait. You're, you're telling me that the CPO ordered four soldiers to fight a high school kid. No, a 12 or 13 year old, like I said. Yeah, fine, either way, the, the CPO ordered four ODSTs to yeah, fight man. a kid. You got it all wrong, okay? Because those four ODSTs were like lambs to the slaughter. What, John outfought them? <laughs> no, 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 it was way worse. As he tells it, the ODSTs did as they were ordered. They surrounded John and one of them swung. What happened next, Petrosky says, defied explanation. Because the sound this kid's fist made, it sounded awful. Because they weren't like punches, they were, they were like rapid fire explosions. Okay, I was across the gym, but I heard it, it was sick. Like meaty cracks in a drum roll. Just... One of the ODST sustained a single body blow that instantly stopped his heart, killing him. Another trooper only took one shot from John as well, a punch that caved in the man's face. Two fatalities, one ODST with a cracked pelvis and one with a shattered spine. That guy never walked again. No one had to break up the fight. It was over in less than five seconds. This is also where the funeral was held for the many Spartan II trainees that didn't survive their augmentations. The first question I have of this ship is, what are they using all the space for? The Epoch is 2,563 meters long and carries only 800 marines, 36 dropships, 24 fighters, and has hangars too small to fit a longsword. GATL-1 longswords are 246 feet wide, meaning that if width was the issue, the Epoch could only carry sabers, broadswords, nandows, and base lards. Booster frames could probably fit too, but it's implied that they require special launch bays. It's just weird that a dedicated carrier would not be able to carry longswords inside and have such a small complement. It just seems like the ship's numbers are 
are a bit more slapdash than usual, and it's most likely because the ship was more or less invented for Halo Fleet Battles, which is a tabletop game. It never appears in a combat situation in any books or comics, so it's never been touched on for corrections. And while the original design uh, visually leaves a bit to be desired, a tiny bit, as per usual, choke point games have outdone themselves. I mean, look at this image. Beyond the Epoch itself, just look at the fleet, the lighting, the Nandau strike fighters being deployed. It's also fucking awesome. Check the description again, please. As I've discussed, Sins of the Prophets is just an awesome community creation, and I suggest you all pay them a visit. I do like the ship. It's just got a few strange quirks about it. I like that the small guns on the side are configured in a sort of broadside arrangement. I love sci-fi ships with broadside cannons. I think that's awesome. Those breakwaters up there are really fucking cool. Like all carriers, we never get to see it in action, and because of the late war UNSC that we see in the games, I've always considered cruisers to be the core of a UNSC fleet. How expensive is it to build a fusion drive just to blow it up, I wonder? But what do you think? Leave a comment down below, and if you can, explain what an X-ray laser warhead is. The next video up is either going to be the beginning of a new series on this channel, or a discussion on the Covenant design pattern system. Either one, I'll hopefully see you there. Peace.